This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today we're going to talk about the most recent patch that brought about some changes to terrain generation. Let's get to it. I just want to take a quick second to let you know that this video has been sponsored by Surfshark VPN. If you want to find out more about this absolutely fantastic VPN service, stick around to near the end of the video or click the link down in the description to find out more. Before we talk about terrain generation, let's cover some of the other things that this patch brought so it fixed some issues with the draugr spawner fixed the locks pet sound effects torches will no longer support structures they fixed the stone size of the dolmen locations they made world loading tweaks and they stopped the server list from downloading when leaving the start menu and they also lowered the amount of stone required to raise the ground using a hoe so one of the biggest things that you're going to notice for the new terrain generation system is how quickly things load. Now, if you take a look here at the map, this is where my main test area is, my main home base, all that. So there's a ton of terrain modification here in a bunch of buildings. Now, if I fly over here real quick, look how quick that loads. Normally, when I would fly over here before the changes to the, the terrain generation, everything would pop in really slowly like you just saw that cart do right there. Now when I fly over here, it just loads right in. As I'm talking to you now, large structures would be still popping in. This building may not even have been loaded in yet, but now when I fly away and fly back, things pop in really quick. Now, if you're not flying and you're not in command, admin commands and all that, you probably wouldn't notice how quickly this stuff pops in because you're gonna be running on the ground. And when I was running on the ground, this stuff would load in without too much issues. But people who have a very, very, very large areas where they've modified the terrain and massive bases when they walk in they do notice that slowdown and how long it takes for things to load in you shouldn't notice that as badly anymore but that's not all there's been some slight changes with how we modify terrain mainly with the hoe you will notice that raising the ground now only costs two instead of four like it used to cost but the difference is now when we raise ground if i look directly down beforehand i would raise a nice large square and it would raise up underneath of me. But if I keep raising the ground, you can see that it's hard for me to stay on top of it because we raise the ground into a point now. The other change that come about is beforehand when we would raise the ground and we would have that nice large square surface to stand on, we would also be able to very gently move our raise ground tool right to the edge of where we're raising the ground and raise the ground again in order to knock out another large chunk of area, saving us on the amount of stone that we had to use. Now, as you see, that doesn't quite work the same. You can lower it down a little bit and raise up, but you're still spending a ton of stone to raise the ground now, as opposed to before where you could spend a fraction of the stone. Now they did lower the cost, but at the same time, it's much more difficult to raise a large chunk. You can see there, I still spent four to get it about the same height. On top of that, you have to, if you wanna stand on top of it while you're doing it, you have to knock it with the pickaxe a little bit. If you do that, it will flatten it out. The other thing you can do is swap over to the smooth tool and you can smooth the top of it and that should flatten it back out for you. So we do that, then we come over here to the edge and we try to raise it again. And you can see there, we got a little bit of raise, but it just kinda, it gave us a little bit of a bump instead of like before, where what it would do is just bring it straight up to level with us here. So now if I go to about the same spot and I hit it again, you can see it gets relatively close. And then we can come over to the level tool, we can level it, that's going to level things out for us. The other thing I noticed is that the level tool seems to be a lot more forgiving when it comes to leveling the land. So you can see we got a pretty decent slope here. And when I go through and level, you can see it brings it up to level with us. Now, most of the time you may not notice that big of a difference unless there's a large like chunk knocked out. So let's go through here and we're just gonna knock this down a couple of times. And you can see we got a nice big divot there. Now, if we come back over with the tool, look how much more it raises the ground now. So now we got, I don't know, half of that divot that we had there before. And now instead of spending four stone to level that off, we spend two stone, hit it one time. We come back over with our level tool 
and now that ground is level with where we were standing. So now we have a situation where when you have something like this, you can't really do like you would do before. So beforehand, when you had a situation like this, what you would do is just take your level or your raised ground tool, you would place it on the edge and you would just go through and you would pop the ground up to level with where you've been leveling. Now in order to level ground that is like this, it's a little bit more involved. You have to take your level ground tool and you wanna just level that. And you can see it's pretty forgiving there. It brought that up rather high, relatively easy, but it's still not quite there. We still have a few divots there. Most of it got brought up. And then in those divots, you're gonna go through and you're just gonna fill those in with a little bit of uh, raised ground. And then you're gonna go back through and you're gonna just level that out. So it's gonna be much more difficult unless you're in admin mode to make absolutely massive changes to the ground like we've seen before in some videos and screenshots where you just have this really raised up large plateau. It's going to be way more difficult to do that. Now it's going to be a situation of where you're going to want to just level off land flat. So you'll take a situation where like what we have right here, you'll start leveling in here and find a lower place and then you're going to bring that down to the level with where you're at instead of raising it up because raising a large plateau is going to be extremely difficult now because of the way this works. Now, before we talk about how these changes affect the pickaxe, I want to take a second to tell you about Surfshark. Did you know you're missing out on a bunch of awesome entertainment on some of your favorite streaming platforms because they region block lots of movies and shows? Well, you are, but don't worry. It's really easy to bypass all those region blocks with Surfshark VPN. VPNs are a great way to not only watch all kinds of stuff that would otherwise be blocked to you online, but they also keep your ISP from knowing what you are up to, and they encrypt all the traffic that comes from your computer, keeping you anonymous online. Surfshark is sponsoring this video, as I stated before, but I also personally use them. That's why I'm cool with them sponsoring my videos. Every time I leave the house, I make sure that I am connected to the Surfshark VPN service. That way, if I connect to any hotspots, I know my data is safe. I also use it to watch a bunch of region blocked UK stuff on Netflix because I really like British entertainment. And I never have any issues with Surfshark. Their speeds are super fast and it's easy to connect and use them. And it's just a solid service. If you wanna check them out, they're offering a great deal right now to all of my viewers. You can get 27 months of service for the low price of $59.76, which is an absolutely fantastic deal. And the best part is, if for any reason at all you are unhappy with their service, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below and check them out. So I haven't noticed too many changes with the pickaxe. If you take a look here, if we just dig straight down, it works pretty much the same as it has before. There isn't a whole lot of changes there and we still can't dig underground tunnels or anything like that. It didn't bring on any cool changes like that. However, what I have noticed is once you've dug all the way down as far as you are able to dig in your area, and you go to trim off a side, so you can still do that. You can still dig down, you can still trim the side. You still have to hit twice because it will slowly raise up out of the ground. As you see here, when we dig, we're getting a nice slope there. If you don't want the slope, you have to hit twice. But what I have noticed is beforehand, when you were right here at the edge, if you dug the edge, the ground would change. It would pop in, then it would pop out, then it would pop in, then it would pop out. So if you wanted a situation where you wanted to keep digging forward, you would have to move forward a little bit, trim it off, hit it again, and then move forward a little bit. But as you see now, we don't get that pop in, pop back effect. Once you've dug it out, it stays dug out. So if you are in an area that has a ton of terrain modification, they have added a command that will allow you to optimize the area. You only need to do this if it's a situation where you're playing on an old map and you have a ton of terrain modifications. 
If you're playing on a new map after this patch, it's not going to be an issue for you. But if you want to optimize the terrain in your area so that you get better load times and all of that, you have to enable the dev commands. So you need to add the dash console to your launch parameters. Then you're going to hit F5. You're going to type in dev commands and hit enter. I already had them active, so it set them to false. So I'm just going to hit it again. You want to see this. It's going to say dev commands true, and then it's going to give you a warning. And then what you're going to do is you're going to type in opt terrain and then hit enter and it's going to do that. And then that should optimize the terrain in the area. Now it only does it for an area. How big that area is, I'm not sure. You can see we got a lot of changes here. It's probably just the area that is loaded because that first one that you saw there up at the top where it says uh, optimized for height changes 24, paint changes 38, that was over here in this area here and that was not loaded over there. So if we come over here to this area here, I ran it standing here and that is all we got. So it only optimized the little bit of area that I've messed with here. If we come back over to here where I just ran it, it's a different area loaded. And you can see it looks like this loaded in even faster this time than it did before. It's most likely a situation where it is only optimizing the area that's loaded that you are standing in. So if you have multiple bases of massive terrain generation, you're probably going to want to run that command at each of those locations. All right, hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other Valheim videos. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my Lee Crow Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment. Just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.